Next week, we head to Thunder Valley in Bristol, Tennessee. There have been five different winners in the last five races at Bristol. And our man, Rusty Wallace, the all-time winning driver, nine times he has won at Bristol, Tennessee. And, of course, uh, including five times on the high bank concrete. Our coverage of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Bristol presented by Penzoil Platinum coming your way next Saturday night under the lights, 7 o'clock Eastern time, kicking off with uh, NASCAR Countdown. Alan Beswick, Brad Doherty, and of course the man who owned that racetrack for so long, Rusty Wallace, uh, and then our live flag to flag coverage. Let's take a look at our AT&T Crew Chief Challenge. Now, we ask you, because we are just down the road from the Motor City, which car manufacturer will win today's race? Would it be uh, Toyota, Chevy, Ford, Dodge? Remember, Toyota's never won here. And it was Chevy back in June. And, wow, a lot of people think that the GM cars are going to get it done today. They better get busy. Because the uh, closest Chevy to the front is eighth, Jeff Burton, right now. There is uh, Carl Edwards, our leader in a Ford, Kyle Busch second in a Toyota, Vickers third in a Toyota, then Biffle, Reagan, Sadler, Kenseth, Jeff Burton is eighth, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is back in ninth position. Remember, he had a handful of car. They were going to come in and make some adjustments. So still got to believe he's wrestling a little bit with the steering wheel. Let's listen to some of the communication. Obviously trying to focus as much as he can. And here moments ago, DJ, I mean, he's got his hands full. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah that's more than your hands full. And it's amazing when your car goes away how you get aggravated with just little things. Yeah, know? he's mad at his spotter. Yeah, <laughs> somebody telling him something that he really didn't need information for is what he's saying. He only needs to know if somebody is sticking a nose up underneath him. Shannon? Yeah, of course, you guys, that was his spotter, TJ Majors, that he was talking to right now, as you just saw, and as you can see right there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. still very loose in that race car. He's saying right now that it, the car is driving like it has a broken axle. So maybe, DJ, you could tell us what exactly that would feel like. Yeah, what happens is that it feels like that just one tire is pulling when you go to get back to the throttle, that you just have one one of those rear wheels that's pulling, and it'll snap the car loose. We fought that here. Well, I've thought that a number of times. I've heard so many people, and this is one of the places that seems to happen more often. You go to get back to that throttle, and it feels like something's broke in the rear end, whether it's the axle, the locker in the rear end, something like that. You get it back home, and very seldom do you ever find that's what's happened. And this has been kind of the, the thing these guys have been fighting, Andy, that, that they start off the race really fast and then they seem to fall back. Here's one of the things. One of the things that happens is these guys think their car's driving so bad that they have to be the worst car on the racetrack. But if, if they can see what we see, all these cars are loose. Everybody seems to have this problem. We see a lot of guys, and we talked about a lot of guys. We see one of them here, Clint Boyer, that's uh, trying to fight his way in and battle his way into this top 12. But he's just really hasn't gotten the job totally done today, but he has made some progress. Rusty, you've been paying attention to these guys. What do you think? Yeah, I really have, DJ. I've been looking at, you know, the 07 of Clint Boyer because he's the guy that's 13th in the points trying to get in this thing really bad. Now he's fell 80 points behind. He's about a second and two tenths off the pace. Car's not handling at all. This guy is in big trouble right now. They're going to need a pit stop to get this thing tuned back up because the car's not handling at all, guys. Yeah, it looks like he's just really totally lost the handle completely of this race car, and and uh, that's not what they need to be doing right now, especially when you've got people like David Reagan running up in the top five. It's going to be uh, make their job even more difficult as they try to make this chase. You know, a lot of times DJs are a lot of grip on the bottom of the racetrack, and he's down there trying to find some grip. I mean, people mostly think it's in the middle on top, but he's trying to get to the bottom just to find anything he can. And uh, Dave, what is he saying down there about his car? Loose all day, Rusty. He's one more of those cars that have just been incredibly, incredibly loose. And Gil Martin told me this morning, you know, to get in this chase, to make it, we've got two things going for we got one thing going against us, one thing going for us. Two not-so-great tracks, this one, evidence today, and Fontana, and two great tracks for us, Bristol and Richmond. They can't wait to get to Bristol next week. 
Dave, I talked to Clint Boyer down in the garage here yesterday, and he's so frustrated. I mean, two of his last four finishes have been 20th or worse. I mean, uh, a big frustration for them. They're 22nd at Chicagoland, 23rd at Watkins Glen. And as you said, they want to get back to some of the tracks that have been really good to him, Bristol and Richmond. And, and, he's, and also, by the way, folks, on top of the stress, he's trying to hold on and win the NASCAR Nationwide Series title, but uh, his lead there is shrinking. If you look at the way they're running right now, he's actually 14th in points. David Reagan is showing, he's kind of showing up on the board in front of him if it would end now. We know it's not. And uh, Clint knows it's not ending now, so he's going to try to do all he can to try to reverse this trend today. And the bad thing is, is they're running out of time to make adjustments. We're down to 80 laps to go in this race, and they're only going to have uh, one and two more probably at the most chances to make this car better, or he's going to find himself finishing well outside the top 20. Here's what Clint himself had to say about the struggles they've been going through. It's been hard to, uh, you know, give all 100 percent you know focus on that nationwide car because of what's been going on in the cup car but uh we're getting all that behind us we've been testing every week in the cup car and, and you know when you're running bad in one it, it takes takes attention takes the focus away from the other greg biffle making a move uh, by the 83 car that is for third position again edwards the leader kyle bush in second biffle now into third yeah, these guys are a little over seven seconds behind our leader, Carl Edwards, who's jumped out to a little over four-second lead over second place. Uh, he's got his car right where he said he was going to have it, as he told us yesterday after he won that nationwide race. Kyle Busch in second spot. He has yet to lead a lap today, but the guy they're chasing, Carl Edwards, has led three times for 47 laps.